responsive e-commerce website landing page with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And today we will work on our footer as well as finalization of the entire website and see how animations, scrolls, hover effects, buttons, etc. are working in each section of this e-commerce website. So this is our footer of four sections with few words about our product FlexWatch, links, icons, and newsletter. We will obviously get rid of the outline in the input field when click, if we remember. It's also responsive otherwise, what's the point of making a website in the first place? By the way, did you notice the scroll reveal animation from left and right in the first and last part of the footer? Well, let's just say, I am proud of not using any libraries or anything besides HTML, CSS, JavaScript in this entire e-commerce website. It may not be a big deal, but it's still a flex nonetheless for at least some people. All right, it's time to see the file setup and start writing HTML. All right, so in our HTML file, we have the footer section outside and right after main tag. That means we will write our HTML carefully outside our section's container of main tag. We are going to be using font awesome icons today for our icons in the footer like we did in all sections. Let's add ingredients for footer recipe with HTML. So we are starting with a footer element with class footer, which will contain all footer content. In footer container, we have brand name and tagline with data reveal attribute for scroll and animation. This footer logo is the first section of this footer. So we have it reveal from the left. Next, we have a simple navigation menu for easy access to key sections. Here it doesn't necessarily have the exact section names that we created in this e-commerce website, but you will know how to connect the related section to the links here using href and make sure to copy paste the ID names from the sections above if you want to link people to them from the footer. Let's not talk about the fact that I was supposed to create all of these sections we are mentioning here, but I may or may not have forgotten about them. Shish, don't tell anyone. It's so fun to make a I voiceover say shh, lol. That should be bestseller section or something not gallery, but anyways. I think we don't have anything to contact us. I am too forgetful to remember what I had made. I think this should be H2 not H1. Anyways for footer socials we have social media icons for users to follow our brand. The icons will be inside a div with the class social icons. Did I mention that we are using font awesome icons for these social icons? It's 2024 made e-commerce website for watch so we will still be using old names for socials. I don't even know if Font Awesome has new icons, but this website feels too old for new stuff. By the way, I had a great time creating this website and spending time with you all on this so thank you so much. Thanks for watching and subscribing throughout this journey. The full website code is in the description, but stick around and keep subscribing. It's free and the code is all yours, nerds. Next. We create a footer newsletter section where users can sign up for updates and special offers. It also has a data reveal right attribute for animation. The form contains an input field for email entry and a submit button inside a styled BTN container div. If you like my content, feel free to check my portfolio website as well as restaurant website landing pages from the link in the description. Finally, we will add a footer bottom div containing the copyright notice. Since we started this website in 2024, we will still write 2024 but feel free to live in the present and write 2025. This seems done so let's go CSS. Since we need to do the finalization of this entire website, we will go straight for the CSS. We styled the footer with a dark background and set the text color. The footer container uses CSS grid to create a responsive layout where columns automatically adjust based on available space. The max width of 1200 pixels keeps it from stretching to wide, while margin centers it, and text align center ensures the content stays visually balanced. 
Each div inside footer container gets some padding and margin for spacing. Our title for each section of footer is H2, so we give a font size and margin bottom there. The footer links UL has no default list styles with zero padding. While anchor tag has a variable text color with a transition of 0.3 seconds for color. If you are somehow still here then please subscribe to my channel, it's free anyways. When hovered, the links change color using variable secondary dark, giving a nice interactive touch. This style applies for both social links as well as section links. Let's add our row class to the social icons to flex the whole thing. I am sure at this point you know the row class and my love for it very well. We just need to add flex direction to column. Each social icon is styled with a font size of 1.5 rem, and the transition makes the color change smooth when hovered. For the footer newsletter, we use flex and flex direction column to align the form elements properly. The input field has a stylish linear gradient background, and a border radius of 5 pixels for a softer look. I have also added outline to none that I forgot to add before showing you guys the demo. By the way, I have a cute portfolio website, check out the YouTube short about it. Link above or in the description and let me know if it's worth making a full video. Back to CSS, on hover, background changes to primary light adding a subtle effect. The button inside footer newsletter is made full width for some reason. Finally, the footer bottom has text aligned to center, a border top for separation between footer sections and footer bottom, and a font size of .9 rim. See how nice this footer looks along with its links and its hover effects. Let's test the responsiveness along with scroll reveal animation. Everything seems nice so far, right? I think we should add some padding in the quick links part between the links. Let me figure out how much padding in the browser and then we will add it to the code. For all LI elements in footer links we will have a 0.5 rem padding. Alright, this seems better and since it's already responsive as we saw earlier. I think now it's time to face the music and say goodbye to this e-commerce website by going through this one last time and changing stuff if we don't like it. So let's see this one time and go for finalization straight away. First thing first, I never liked heading text to be different for everything. So let's make it responsive using clamp. If you don't know how to use clamp then check out my YouTube short about it to learn everything you need to know about CSS clamp. Click the link icon above. Let's me check if there are other font sizes associated with heading text. Seems good now let's go to HTML to see where we use this heading text so we can check it in the browser. Is it me or this why choose us looks giant? Let me figure out the perfect clamp value. Something is off with this about section let me see other heading text if they are fine or not. Testimonial heading text is fine, but I think we can make clamp's minimum value to be to point to from to point 0.5 rem. Let's see the home section first then go over each section later. Its animations are working just fine, but while home section is responsive, as you can see, it's breaking layout a little earlier than 768 pixels. What we can do is just cut the code related to home section from 768 pixels or above media query and paste it in new let's say 500 pixels or above viewport width. Now we see if it works or not. It's working just fine, but let's add a max width for the container to shorten social distancing between text and watch. Let's see home section on all screen sizes real quick. Everything seems perfect now let's go to about section. The morph animation as well as boxes moving animation seems to be working just fine. I may have sped up the video to save your time but it's working. The heading text is still looking large and unsatisfying to me. 
But if you are fine with it, then leave it be. Now the title looks better and doesn't go to the next line on small screens. We still need to add max width to get the text besides watches rather than below at least within 900 pixels viewport width. Because this doesn't look good. So we have left a BT class with the max width into different places, so we will remove it. This layout change looks better happening a little earlier than 1024 pixels viewport width. So we will make left ABT max width 600 pixels and remove the other max width from Mania queries. If you ever can't keep up with the pace then feel free to get the entire code. But please don't hurt my views and continue to subscribe to this channel. Now we have 550 max width and 500 min width. Let's see how pretty this add to cart bestseller section looks and how well its functionality works. It's my favorite section in this entire e-commerce website because it got me. The most subscribers and views lol. I think we need a max width here as well so no card is left alone in any moment of viewport width. How about 870 pixels max width? Perfect, now let's see gallery, which I would rather not mess with. I may or may not be scared of it so this much responsiveness is fine to me. Although we can still change the subheading font size that looks too big. Let me make it to 0.3 rem and then see where else we use sub heading text class. Let me remove it from watch blog as well since to 0.3 rem should work everywhere. Looks better let's see testimonial sliders as well. I may be asking a lot but please subscribe to my channel, it's free for you and means a lot to me. I think it's fine as well now we check the blog section and its layout for different screen sizes. The whole responsive e-commerce watch website landing page looks pretty satisfying right? Don't forget to grab the full website code from the link as a gift for being with me throughout this website.